Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And as part of my effort to review all the games in my top 100 games of all time, today we're going to be reviewing Dominion. Also, with an opener like that, you know I already like this game, so let's save you the time. I like this game, I recommend Dominion, go ahead and check it out, it's in my top 100 games of all time. But seriously, let's go ahead and go into this. This is Dominion. Yes, I have a giant wood box over here. This is from One Sharp Joe. I'll try to include a link down below if I remember, but basically check out One Sharp Joe Crafts. He has a website, he has an Etsy store, and he sells fantastical things like this that will uh, basically give you uh, ways to hold all your tons and tons and tons of Dominion cards. So uh, that's what we have over here. But past that, and yes, I do have tons and tons and tons of Dominion cards. But let's go into this game. What is Dominion? How does it play? Why do I like it? All of those things. Let's start, start talking about the game. Dominion is a deck builder. It's a deck builder that's been out for quite some time, and the general idea, I mean, I think to a certain extent it is credited as being one of the games that popularized deck building, although to be very clear, it is not the first game that did deck building, it's just the one that made it super popular. Kind of the way, like, Gloomhaven, Jaws of the Lion did, like, flip books, and people were like, wow, flip books, I'm like, wow, flip books, thank you, Jaws of the Lion, even though it wasn't really the first, so there is that. But Dominion is a deck builder. A deck builder, the, deck, the term deck builder has two general connotations. The first is when you have something like Magic the Gathering, where you build your deck. You, you go ahead, you have a fixed pool of cards, and before the game ever begins, you build your deck, and you walk into the game, and then go ahead and uh, try to kill people with your deck, or beat them, or reduce the life to zero, or if you're playing Lurkana, get to like 20 lore. Whatever the thing is you're doing, you build your deck before the game. Then you have games like Dominion, games in which in the game itself you are building out your deck. In the game, you're going through the process of starting with a set pool of cards, which everyone's the same, generally some games will have some degree of variation to them, but in the game you're trying to build out and develop a deck that is going to get better and better and better as you go through it. So the general idea, for example, over here using Dominion, we're going to go ahead and gather seven coins over here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we're going to gather three estate, now these cards are worth points, but right now all they're doing is clogging our deck, which means right now we don't like them one bit. We're going to go and shuffle it up the starting hand. All players are going to have the starting hand. We're going to go ahead and take our first turn. Now, again, the, the general idea here is that you are building your deck as you go. So I draw one, two, three, four, five cards over here, and the goal is to end with the most points. And these cards, estates, duchies, and provinces are points, although sometimes you'll have a little confusing cards like this that are mixed into your general pool of cards that will give you points as well. Now, I went ahead and I drafted my hand, draw, not drafted, I drew my hand of five cards, and look at that, we have five money over here. Just five money to go ahead and spend on our cards. And so to that end, let's go ahead and take a look at what we have over here. We could just spend five money right away, which is generally a good idea. Let's go ahead and do a merchant ship. We're going to buy a merchant ship, so we're going to spend five money. We're going to take that merchant ship, and we're going to put it into our discard pile over here. That was our five money spent. That's our turn. Done. The next player takes their turn, and then it's back to my turn. Now, there is some degree of interaction in which the next player's turn matters, but we'll come back to that. Right now, though, because we know that our starting hand had seven money, and I drew five of it, we know that we're having a two money turn, which is uh, uh, unfortunately true. We have a stone Mason over here we can get. You can trash a card from your hand to gain two cards, each costing less than it. That could be interesting. When you buy this, you may overpay for it. If you do, gain two action cards, each costing the amount you overpaid. So it's an interesting little card where you can overpay for it. Right now, I can't afford to pay overpay for it, so I will go ahead and spend two money to go ahead and gather that. Now, it's worth noting you can buy the cards up here as well. We have a copper, which is worth one money. It costs zero. We have silver, which is worth two money. It costs three. Gold's worth three. It costs six. Estate is one point. Cost two. Dutch is a three point. Worth five. Accounts cost five, promises us six points, and it costs eight. Now, one thing you may have noticed there with my second turn is those three duchies, while they are worth three points, they're also kind of cramping my style, because I drew a hand where I didn't have a lot of fun things in it. Imagine a game in which I didn't have those three duchies and three estates in there, which I didn't have those there, and I could simply draw and play more efficient turns, which is why one of the things you might want to consider doing in Dominion is trying to trash those cards that are, well, just not really helping your cause. We're going to go ahead, and we have another hand over here, but this time we have some new cards in play. We have a merchant ship and a stonemason. Look at those actions. They're amazing. They're incredible. Let's go ahead and use both of them. We can't. We can't. That's the rules in the game, unfortunately. You can't use both actions, because Dominion gives you one action and one buy. I mean, you can only go ahead and buy one card each turn, unless you do something that lets you buy more than one card. You also only have one action, which means I need to choose which of these actions I'm going to go with, and I am going to go with the Merchant Ship, because I like the Merchant Ship. So, although the tricky part is... I could go ahead and use the Stonemason to trash the estate. That's the tricky part. Do I immediately want to get rid of my estate? 
gain two cards costing less than it. So if I get rid of the estate, the problem is the estate costs two. So only two cards I can get that cost less than it would be the copper. So you know what? I am going to go ahead with my merchant ship over here. We'll spend my merchant ship. That's going to go into play. It's my action, but it's also a duration action over here. Now I have to start of your next turn gain two money, which means I have two money in my hand, but really I have two more from the merchant ship and next turn I'll also have two as well. So you can see how I'm slowly starting to craft my strategy over here. Keep in mind, I could have bought the crown, which would have been an entirely different five point card. I could have gone ahead and bought a duchy, clogged my hand fuller, giving me points, but possibly at what cost. We have the gardens, the workers village, the warehouse. I could have overplayed for the stonemason and gathered two action cards costing those extra three that I overpaid, which I probably should have done in hindsight, but hindsight is hindsight. We're not here for hindsight. We're here for the actual turn. So, I have four money to spend. Let's go ahead and take a look. We have the warehouse, which costs three. We have the workers' village. You know what? I do like the workers' village. Plus one card, plus two actions, plus one buy. I generally like village cards a lot. They usually give you extra cards, extra actions. Keep in mind, a card that gives you an extra card and extra action is effectively replacing itself because you draw it, which is the card, you play it, which is the action, and it gives you a card and action back. It's just replacing itself. The fact that it gives you two actions, though, that means it replaces itself plus another action, and it gives you plus one buy, which gives you flexibility for when eventually I am a rich person, but I'm not a rich person yet. Let's go ahead and take one more turn and then get more into like some other details past just playing the game. So we have five more cards here. It's likely going to be a lot of money. It's some money. We have some money over here. We have three coppers over here and let's go ahead and buy a silver. We're going to ignore all the fun little cards on the table because sometimes just buying more money means in the future when I draw that, there's a higher chance of me being able to afford those more expensive cards, which is always good. But also I forgot. I'm, I'm silly. I forgot. Let's go ahead and put that back over here because I actually have two more money from this over here. I have two more money for the merchant ship because I have this at this is going to execute at the start of the next turn because it's a duration card So let's go ahead and actually buy stonemason We're gonna buy another stonemason, but this time around we can get two cards that cost three So now I'm gonna get two silvers over here. No, they have to be action cards. I lied They have to be action cards Let's go ahead and gather these two caravan guards They give you plus a card in action But they do so at the start of your next turn as well And they're also a reaction which can protect against attacks that's kind of what you need to know to get the general flow of Dominion. You're going to start with a preset hand of cards. You go a preset deck that all players have. From there, depending on what you draw and depending on what you buy, you are slowly but surely changing out your, your abilities, your actions, all that. We have this giant stack full of cards over here, which represents all the various Dominion expansions because this is a game I have played a lot and I have a lot for it. Each of these packs over here, they're sleeves and sleeves. Each of these represents another pile of cards that could go onto your Dominion table over here, replacing the common pool of 10 cards that you have with whatever other cards that I have to clean up because I decided to go for dramatic effect and dramatic effect has a cost which is basically cleaning things up later but we'll do that part later so let's talk about a few more things you should know about before we got into go into the actual uh, what I like don't like and conceal is not liking and to that end we have a bunch of cards here. Now, Dominion, the base game, is going to give you these treasure cards, which are how you buy things. The victory cards, which are how you win when you slowly deplete the provinces. That will trigger endgame. And then you have the action cards in the middle over here. And the action cards primarily come with actions, where you have a little action tag here. We have reactions, which is that blue little box. Those are often utilized to respond to attacks, because you also have action attacks over here. This one over here is going to be an attack action. It's going to, in some way, hurt the other players at the table, generally. Maybe they discard cards. They have to give you something. It generally hurts the other other players and usually reactions can be used against that sometimes to defend and sometimes just to do something as a response to the attack it may not even defend you it might just like be like hey um enjoy life because you got attacked. We also have over here, we have treasures. Sometimes you're going to have cards in the main area that actually count as treasures as well. You have action treasures over here. We have duration actions. As you can see, these are both duration actions. Those are going to go into play and come back next round. We have victory cards that are also going to the common pool as well. So you have a whole smorgasbord of a ton of different ways to augment the system, all of which have been slowly been added to Dominion expansion after expansion after expansion. Expansions like Prosperity added a ton of money and even 10 cost monies or, you know, 8 cost victory points. I don't even remember what they are, but tons of extra more expensive cards, and they added a lot of ways that give you more treasure in the game. Seaside, I think it's called Seaside, gives you those durations over there, which are going to be actions that expand into the next domain. You can have other modules that give you more cards that go off to the side that don't even have a, that don't even go into the same common pool. There's going to be sideboards and ways of accru accruing debt. Expansion after expansion, Dominion has iterated upon that core concept, giving you things like, well, let me just show you this again for dramatic effect. We have all these cards over here. And this is not even everything Dominion. This is just the last time I decided to go ahead and update everything and sleeve all the stuff and all of that. But this is basically Dominion 
And uh, with that, let's go ahead and talk about my review. So, you already know I like this game, but let's talk about why. First of all, this is a two to four player game. I probably should have said that earlier, but this is a two to four player game, which I think the general rules are actually pretty straightforward. You have to teach deck building as a concept if they haven't played that. But then from there, the game is basically, hey, read the text on the cards and do that. This is fixed pool deck building, which means you have a specific subset of cards that are available every single game. And each game is going to be a different subset of cards, giving you that variety, but you don't have a rotating card row like many other deck builders do, that they have a giant pool of cards and you just, you just have an option of whatever's out over here. But that does mean that you have the ability to plan. We're getting into the things I like. Let's skip to the things I like. What do I like about this game? Well, I like deck building in general. I like what deck building did for the hobby. I like the concept of, hey, you don't want to sit there and invest all your hours of your life building and buying cards for something like Magic the Gathering where you can build this deck, but instead you want to experience that, but within the game itself, make it a part of the game. Well, that's what Dominion does. It gives you that feeling of crafting a deck that is better than your opponents, but that's not so that you can play the game. That legitimately is the game. And I like deck building in general. And Dominion was, I don't know if it's my first interaction with deck building. I'm pretty sure I played a few acres of snow before Dominion and that at the very least had deck building and there's other games that have deck building, but Dominion is certainly the one that made it like the game. This is deck building. Deck building is what Dominion is. And they're synonymous and they give you that experience of having a ton of options and then it's up to you to try to craft that deck. I specifically like the fixed market deck building. It's my favorite way of playing deck building games because it gives me that agency of feeling like I'm actually looking at the pool of possibilities and crafting based on that and also how poor I am at any given turn, but at least I'm doing so with the knowledge of what's out there. I'm not doing so based on the fact that there's five cards in a row and I just pick the best card, which is usually the obvious choice, which is generally how I feel about rotating market deck building. I like fixed market deck building, and I like what Dominion brings to that. I like the sheer variety of it. The amount of cards in this pool, now granted, you can't just get this by spending $35. You have to buy all the expansions, or at least a bunch of expansions, and I, I don't think you need a ton of expansions. I think Dominion on its own will give you a great experience for enough games, and I think if you mix in, you know, two expansions, again, Seaside and Prosperity still to this day are some of my go-to recommendations, but if you just grab those two expansions, you're already going to have so many cards and rotational aspects. Having this much is just overkill. You should, you should really love this game before you go to this extent extent or this level, but I, I do love this game and I, I want all of this stuff over here. I also want to pick up the expansions I don't have yet, which are a handful. But anyways, that's basically the idea of, I, I like the variety that the game is going to be bringing. I like the fact that Dominion specifically gives you this aspect where as you buy victory points, which are how you win, you're also clogging your deck, making your turns less efficient. And so there's this trade-off as you go through it of at what point do you want to continue building out the best possible turns versus at what point do you want to execute on cashing in on those turns so you can gather as many provinces as possible and win before your opponent does and maybe the fact that you started going for duchies a little bit earlier than they did means you just have those few extra points necessary to be able to close that end game and to win at dominion and so i like that little push and pull aspect of knowing when to drive end game but ultimately i like the simplicity and cleanliness of the system a game that gives you a ton of variety a ton of feeling of strategy a feeling of control of deck building as a genre as a game of knowing when to push end game or not understanding how to clog your deck when to what not understanding what to look at the market of cards seeing 10 different cards and start to formulate a strategy before the game even begins of which cards will play off nicely from each other. What do you want to trash? What do you want to draw? What's going to give you those extra actions or those buys? What are all the things you're going to do? You have the information, and now it's up to you to try to figure out how you're going to win. As far as things I don't like about the game, first of all, I'll say that as you get more and more Dominion stuff, inevitably there are going to be cards and modules and things that just don't resonate with you. Even Core Dominion, you'll find a few cards, you're like, that's just not a fun card, I don't like that. So that does happen. There are better sets than others. I think Alchemy to this day is considered to be one of the worst sets to the point that Donald of Axe, you know himself, the design of Dominion, I believe, said uh, he would have done things differently. But uh, there are better and worse sets. There are better and worse cards. There are better and worse modules. There are things that add to the setup time or the maintenance stuff. There are some cards that require specific side cards, which requires a whole degree, whole degree of setup and knowledge that is just unnecessary, and I find myself never really going for them. So I think that, I think the biggest thing I don't like about this is bloat to a certain extent does affect all the things I enjoy or don't enjoy. But I'll also say that the math of the game tends to reward more direct chasing of points than pure, I guess, fun, I want to call it. Basically, sometimes in the game, you are more incentivized to go straightly for silver or gold from a mathematical aspect of how to win if you go for the boring cards, the ones that are in play every single game, if you go for those more than you instinctively might, you probably will win. There have been all these kinds of things done on Dominion as far as the studies and showing the breakdown there. It has algorithmically been proven that going directly for gold is not the most efficient, rather going for gold plus a combination of other things is more efficient. But they've also done that as a response to the fact that more often than not, they found that players who are going for all the cards in the middle to try to build out their deck, the other players who are just going for gold more, not necessarily exclusively, but more, they might have a 
higher win rate. So you really do have to be mindful of the fact that if your goal is to win Dominion, you really don't want to forget about the copper, silver, well, the copper you could forget about, but the silver and gold, you don't want to forget about those. No matter how appealing the 10 cards are in the market that are different every single game, sometimes gathering something that's a little bit more boring but a little more re reliable is better for you. And I, I don't love that. I don't love the fact that when I play this game, I'm like, am I going to play it optimally and buy more gold? Or do I still want to build out the coolest engine? The net result is that I usually lose the minion, but I also have turns where I go action card, action card, action, two actions, that was thrown into a crown, thrown into that, we're going to go ahead and do this, then do that, then do that, and look at that, look at my turn, it's been half an hour. Do you have any points? No, you don't, but did you have fun? Yes, I sure did. That does happen in this game. As far as what I can see, others not liking a few small things that might make Dominion a game that's not right for you. First of all, the whole aspect of clogging your hand as you get to the end game. I like the trade-off that gives you in Dominion where you have to think through how you want to engage with the system, but you might just find it frustrating to be like, hey, look at that, I did the thing I'm supposed to do, I bought point cards, and look at that, my turn's not fun anymore. It will happen to an extent. You won't have completely not fun turns, but you will have some turns that are less fun as you start to clog your hand with points as you go through the game. Also, to a certain extent, it is a numbers game. It's about trying to figure out that, that pathway forward and trying to figure out what's going to cascade off of this, and that'll give you two actions, you can use that. There's a degree of trade-off in this might make it a little less fun. And you also, to a certain extent, I think the biggest critique I'll give of this is that you do need expansions to keep the game fresh, in my opinion. While I think Dominion can show you the taste of what Dominion is, I do think it's a game that if you're playing it at all frequently, like if you're playing out Dominion and playing it once every three months, you're fine. But if you're playing out Dominion more than that at all, I think it is a game that will eventually start to get a little stale unless you start throwing expansions into the mix. And so to that extent, if you are signing up for this experience, I recommend mentally thinking of it as a 75, it's 75 to 90 game depending on where you're buying your expansions and games from as opposed to thinking of it as a you know single base game price again the base game will suffice if you're playing it infrequently but that's basically it which brings us to our final thoughts on dominion as we know from the very beginning of this video as a game that's in my top 100 this is definitely a game i enjoy this is a 4.5 out of 5 for me it's a game that has continued to hold strong for me through expansion after expansion through game after game as every single game and their brothers cousins uncles aunts and pet neighbors dogs as they all start to add deck building into the mix dominion is still a game that holds strong for me. It's still a game that is immensely satisfying. It's still a game where I enjoy getting it to the table. It's still a game where I consistently will, will look at this and be happy to pull it out and play it. Dominion to me is still one of the all-time greats of deck building and has continued to hold through, through the cult of the now, through the cult of the future, through the cult of the everything. Dominion is still here and I still recommend it. 4.5 out of 5. Although if you are looking for other game recommendations, I will say a game that feels very reminiscent of Dominion that I still have fond nostalgia for, no longer my collection, but it's a game I definitely enjoyed, which is Trains. Trains is often described as Dominion, but with a board, and it's focused on trains. The board is giving you trains and spots and all that, but it really does give you that same feel. It gives you the fixed card markets. A lot of things I like about Dominions are very much present in Trains. I recommend giving that a shot. And if you're looking for another uh, fixed market deck builder that didn't work for me as much, but it is very popular and people like it, uh, Anne's End deck building game has like a bajillion variations, expansions, big boxes, legacy games, all these various things for it. That's going to be another fixed market deck builder where you work together with other mages to take down whatever big bad you happen to be uh, dealing with at any given point in time. In any case, until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, I hope you have a good one.